Let's think about this. First, let's think about physical capacity, physical current capacity. Uh, the limit of, of a particular site beyond where which where and tear will take place and will have been back on environment. I'll be thinking about that. That will arise. <coughs> there is also the element of psychological current capacity. You know when you when you when you have emotions in your mind, what do you have? You are alone on the beach. Yeah, you're alone on the beach and no one is bothering you. <laughs> yeah, but with two million tourists. Right? You have to squeeze among the tourists, you know, just to get the place and put your towel there and ride right? You have to start thinking about that. So the tourists, they have some limits. You know, psychologically, they, we have to know what is the lowest degree of enjoyment the tourists are you know, prepared to accept before they come here or try to go elsewhere. So we have to start thinking about that. We do a survey on you. Uh, and also on the social current capacity. And also, on, not only the tourists, the host population as well. Uh, because about the uh, presence and the behavior of tourists in the destination, and they might be crowding out. Because Mauritians, for example, they like to go on the beach during the weekend. You know, if you, if you had to stay here during the weekend, or if you have been during the weekend, you will find that the beach, they are these Mauritians. Uh, and tourists normally they don't go on the beach during the weekend, they stay in the hotels or they visit parks or uh, somewhere else. They don't go on the beach. Uh, it's not nice to go uh, and be in, you know, sun base, you know, you don't have mind space. Uh, and also we have to think about the economic current capacity because uh, to absorb tourism activities we have to replace or we disrupt other local activities. So again, these are questions that we have to ask if we are going to bring 2 million tourists by 2050. Uh, and also, not to mention, there will be stress on our resources. We are a small island, we import practically everything. Uh, it will cause exact uh, pressures on our demand for you know, even employment. We are importing labor. Uh, water, uh, although we are, you know, have lots of rain, we have rivers, but we don't collect them properly. We waste them. Uh, we, have, we have demand on electricity, and again, this is very reliable on imported oil, and we have the problem of space, a uh, small uh, island. So, all these we have. A risk to reason, there are risks. The risks are, there are leakages. Again, we, because we import a lot, we are a small island, we have to import a lot. And they are sometimes uh, poor linkages. Now, these are the points not only for Mauritius, but in general. In general, when you look at the uh, destination, especially in the African region, uh, this is what we find when we did this study for the Utah. Uh We found that there are lots of linkages, uh, also less in Mauritius, but a lot in uh, other African countries. Sometimes it leads uh, an economy to be too dependent on, on tourism, uh, and too, being too dependent on one industry is never too good. Uh, tourism, any improving in standard, I don't say no. It will it has impact. We have seen it uh, in a few studies. It increases the living standards. Uh, however, it can destabilize the whole community uh, in terms of increased tension, uh, alcohol, prostitution, begging, uh, drugs abuse, and so on. And also, the local cultures, we have to be careful when we go to a particular destination. It's very, very sensitive. And also, it has impact on, uh, on nature. And we are now talking about sustainable tourism. A significant destination is does it have a plan for sustainable tourism? Uh, I did mention that in the speech. You know, it, it, we will put we are nature the survival of humankind and the particular destination as well. Uh, the, the concept of sustainable tourism was developed uh, in the late 1980s, especially when everybody was talking about the concept of sustainable development. Then we say, well, it has impact on the environment and so on. So, you know, we have to start adopting sustainable development in tourism, and we call it sustainable tourism. Uh, so sustainable tourism is, is said to be a type of tourism that again meets the needs of present tourists and the host regions while protecting and enhancing opportunities for the future. Uh, also, I would say that all forms of tourism development uh, need to be uh, managed, the managed activity to maintain environmental, social, and economic integrity and the well-being of natural, built, and cultural resources in purpose. This would be some a very good definition for sustainable tourism. Uh, when we look at tourism over the years, how it has evolved, let's say from the 1950s to now, uh, before we, put, we are talking about conventional tourism, we're talking about the three S, right? sun, sun, and, and, and sea. But we all know that this model, uh, the conventional model, it really failed. Uh, it wasn't promoting sustainability. Uh, there were limited benefits to the communities, and that it had in, uh, pressures on the environment. However, when we look at Various destinations, uh, 
things that all types of tourism can be sustainable. I mean, if we take, for example, I mean, in Mauritius, sometimes we say, well, tourists from Reunion Island, they are what we call the mass tourists. But however, sometimes we say, well, they don't have a high impact on the economy. But we don't, we haven't managed them properly. But if we, if I take the example of Australia, the industry of backpackers is huge. And it's significant, yeah? But they are properly controlled. And so far here, we haven't adopted it. So this is a practice that we have to learn from other destinations. So we have to pick the best, you know, types of tourism in different destinations and adopt those practices. So we need to have case studies and learn from other destinations so that we can understand all forms of tourism can be sustainable and they will be welcome as, as, a, as a development. As a development. Uh, nowadays, there is a shift towards uh, from mass tourism to new forms of tourism, which we call alternative tourism, like you know, green tourism. <coughs> We're talking about the culture heritage, nature-based tourism. These are new forms of tourism, tourism that are taking place, and these are, things, uh, these are I think, dimensions that destinations should be uh, adopting. Uh, I was very surprised to see, to see for example, in, in Dubai, uh, there were a uh, lot of emphasis on bird watching. I was thinking, well. How, how many birds are there in the desert? Yeah? But you see, they have they have very good sanctuaries. They have uh, they are marketing it up. You will be surprised. Uh, some prerequisites for sustainable tourism: uh, make sure that resources are not overconsumed, uh, that natural and human environments are protected, that tourism is integrated with other activities. Uh, tourism, you know, that it provides real benefits to the community. We have to make sure that it spill over to the local uh, communities. Uh, and that make the local people involved, especially when they are planning for tourism. Let's say you're building a park, you're building a, a hotel, make the local community aware you know, uh, of what is happening. And they can get prepared uh, for psychology, psychology, what is happening in their area, in their region. And also how to uh, respect the culture and, and people. Uh, sustainable development for me, it is really a long term process. You know, I, it's very long term. You know, when, when you're going to have a session, you have find this, you know, when you're presenting. So I got the first five minutes later. Um, okay, there's a call for sustainable tourism. Uh, for sustainable tourism, yes, for the long term. But what do we do in the short run? This, this is why there have been so many international conferences on responsible tourism. This is where we have to be very proactive in the short term. Uh, it is a proactive approach. Uh, I would just skip a few slides just because I have five minutes. Uh, first of all, I would just say uh, to be responsible, first of all, the characteristics of uh, being responsible tourists is that we try to promote uh, responsibly towards environment through sustainable use of resources, involve uh, local communities in the tourism industry, and to focus on safety and security of visitors. This is becoming a big issue. Uh, I'm sure we are all aware about the security of visitors nowadays. Uh, whose responsibility it is? Uh, government agencies, uh, investors, owners, employees of the tourism, tourism industries, employees outside the industry, and the members of the local community. We are all stakeholders. We all have the responsibility for responsible tourism. It can be joint. I mean, it doesn't say it's that each and every one, but we can have coordinated responsibility uh, together. Uh, first of all, I would say I would just split responsible tourism into three uh, categories, uh, dimensions, if you want. In terms, first of all, in terms of socio-culturally responsible tourism, is where we have the mutual understanding and respect for the people and societies, uh, where socially cultural responsible tourism advocates for respect for the local culture, you know, respect for ethical values, the diversity, the religion, custom, and so on. Now, how do we do that? We okay, start very first where we start uh, to plan our holidays. You know, we start with the destination marketers and the tour operators, travel agents. You know. They can act out as a facilitator by educating uh, the tourists on cultural aspects of particular destinations. You know, that their education will create awareness, not only for the tourists, but for the host as well, for the local communities. And it has case studies where we have seen that educating tourists has uh, a better impact. Again, environmentally responsible uh, tourism. Try to adopt good environmental practices, uh, reduce environmental impacts, uh, adopt environmental management systems, uh, design, sustainable design and construction of buildings, uh, sustainable use of natural resources, and try to maintain biodiversity. 